We give God all the glory and we give God all the praise. Everybody, blessings to you. I know you're really going to enjoy this message that I'm sharing on here. Um, if you can share me on all social media right now, every single person, share me on uh, Facebook, share me on uh, Twitter, share me on all social media right now, if you can, on Instagram. Share me on all social media right now, if you can. Now, I want to share this message with you. I know it's going to be very powerful. You're going to really enjoy this. <clears throat> but do you care about King Jesus? Do you care about him? You know, King Jesus is a person. And the spirit of the Lord is always going to uh, create opportunities for you to exalt the right thoughts, the right person, the right um, avenue of focus. All the time. Even if you are working at a workplace, the Holy Spirit will train you of who to exalt. Sometimes you're supposed to exalt a boss or exalt a co-worker that has been given authority to assist you in a task. The fact that that co-worker is there to assist you, you're supposed to exalt that co-worker because they have insight on how to get that mission done in an expedited fashion accurately. And that's the secret of teamwork. Knowing who has the major wisdom to impart instructions, advice, and counsel so that that task can occur quickly, accurately. Praise God. But do you care about King Jesus? The Bible says, if you give a cup of cold water in my name. King Jesus talked about how if you gave a cup of cold water, it's servanthood to me, it's service to me. Because this is showing care to King Jesus. Do you know how to care for King Jesus? Do you care about him? Receiving a hospitality anointing from the Holy Spirit. A Holy Spirit anointing for hospitality. Think about it. Hospitality is the grace to attend to someone's needs. If you take a note, write it down. Hospitality is the ability to discern what someone needs supplied to them. Hospitality is the ability to discern what supplies to give to an individual. Hospitality is the ability to show your love to someone. Hospitality is the grace for you to touch someone's desires. Hospitality is the ability to create confidence in someone. If you ever notice when you're hospitable to someone, how they begin to get confident in your house or get confident at your workplace or get confident in your vision because you are showing them hospitality. It creates confidence in others. Sometimes when people first come to a region, they don't feel confident because of no hospitality. But hospitality creates confidence in others. Isn't that powerful? That's a wisdom, though. I'm giving you wisdom for life here. Hospitality causes others to become bold in love. When people see that you're freely walking in love, you affect them to become a lover as well and to operate in that love with boldness. How is it that mankind hold back on righteous thoughts but run fast into wrong thoughts? How is it? Do you know how to care about King Jesus? Do you care about King Jesus? How is it that people run to do dangerous things but they procrastinate to do deliverance things. You, you, don't, you, you, you pull back if God tell you to pray for somebody, but you run towards gossip and criticism. Do you care about King Jesus? Every single day you should ask the Lord, what is his focus? What does he need from you? Every single day of your life, you should ask King Jesus, what in my life needs to change? Are you satisfied with me? 
Is my life making you happy? Is what I'm saying and doing, is it creating pleasure for you? Do you really ask the Lord for his preference or has your preference become the captain of your ship? Never let wrong under... If you're taking notes, write this down. I just heard the Spirit of God utter this. Underdeveloped preference. Underdeveloped preference. You know what underdeveloped preference is? I'm just hearing this from the Spirit of God. Is where you prefer things before you enter into the fullness of wisdom. Listen to what I just said, and That's so amazing to me. I'm learning too as I'm listening to this, the angel of the Lord beside me here translate what God is saying in heaven. Underdeveloped preference Les solo kulianda. Ratos sesile flesia. Underdeveloped preference is what you desire before God reveals his will to you. Is what you crave before you're delivered. Wow. Isn't this amazing here? Huh? Underdeveloped preference is when you crave something before you're delivered. Or you have an appetite before you have liberty. Because your appetite in bondage is different than your appetite when you're free. Your appetite as a son is different than your appetite as a slave. If you're taking notes, you can write all those down. Watch on the replay so that we can keep on moving here. And so, do you care about King Jesus? Because... Now his preference is going to be an impartation to you, a download to you. And it's going to direct you and navigate you in which direction to go. You should always ask King Jesus when you're in a situation with someone else, am I dealing with them correctly? Is that how you want me to deal with them? So many times people deal with people the way that they want to deal with people. They don't go to God because they know that God may correct them and say that's not right. Many people, I promise you this, that out of all the relationships on earth, that people have never gone to God and said, God, am I dealing with this person the way that you want me to deal with them? Am I reacting to them the way that you want me to react? Am I talking to them the way that you want me to talk? So many people have bosses. They never went to God and said, Lord, am I dealing with my boss correctly? Am I robbing my boss of the paycheck that he's given me? Or, or she's giving me, whoever your boss is. Am I robbing them because I have the wrong attitude? I have the wrong servanthood. I have the wrong focus. I have the wrong presence. Your boss can feel your presence. You go into your workplace or whenever that time comes and you're in your workplace and you really don't want to be there. Your boss can tell when you don't want to be there. You don't have to say a word. Your boss studies you. I promise you that the boss studies you then more than the coworker that hates you. I promise you that. That your boss studies you more than the co-worker that is jealous of you. That person that you think always stalking you and looking at you on the side, I bet your boss, that's why most times when your boss hears somebody make a complaint about you, that's why your boss still can make the right decision. Because your boss was watching you way before they was watching you. Nobody hires anybody and not stalk them. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> A boss is a divine stalker. And after all, they have the right to stalk you because they're paying you. I might got to renege off of that statement because I got people I hire that I don't study. <laughs> I don't study what they post because I know sometimes they may not post me. So I don't study them as hard. I, I'm going to give you my secret. I only study people on social media that I know post me. So if you feel that I don't study you, it's because you're not posting me. I study people that post me. I only, I only look for people that post me. That's my secret. Do you know? Now you understand what Prophet Joshua Holmes do. There's a lot of people on Facebook that I don't follow. You might be on my friends list, but I don't follow you because you don't post me. You're not a part of me. I only look at people that got my statements. I only want to hear what God said to me. I don't want to hear about Nicki Minaj. I don't want to hear about Cardi B. I don't want to hear about none of them. I don't want to hear about Nas. I don't want to hear about Jay-Z. I don't want to hear about none of them. I only want to hear what came from God to me because it's a sign to me. God spoke it to me so that me could be at the highest level of me. 
You see what I'm saying? Discretion is the hatred for wrong info. If you're taking notes, write that down. Discretion is the hatred for wrong info. Discretion is the hatred for wrong info. Hallelujah. 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 Having wrong information inside of you creates your corruption. You become something that's not divine. When you receive information that's not a part of your growth, a part of your wisdom, a part of your journey with the Father. Do you care about King Jesus? When you care about King Jesus, you'll, you'll become a student of questions. You'll ask the Lord questions. Why can't you confront God? What are you hiding from God? Why can't you ask him any questions? If you can't go to your father in heaven and have a conversation, it's proof of wickedness in you. Always think about this. Always think about what I just said. If you never can go and acknowledge God face to face, it is proof of wickedness in you. I've often asked people in my life, what did God say about that? I've never seen a person listen to God and not prosper. I've never seen a person listen to God and not become made whole. I've never seen a person listen to God and not become more peaceful. I've never seen someone listen to God and become more of a servant. I've never seen someone listen to God and become more humble. I've never seen someone listen to God and become more fearful of his presence. Don't listen to this dumb generation that try to give you a definition of the fear of God. The fear of God means the fear of God. Uh, oh, wait, uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Fear God, fear God. You know, fear God. The fear of God means I want you to fear him. I want you to be scared that if you do something other than what he wants, you could arouse his anger against you. That's what the fear of God means. That's what it means. But do you care about King Jesus? Do you care about King Jesus? See, when you care about King Jesus, you don't want to make him angry. You don't want to go a route that he didn't instruct you to go. You don't want to have wrong appetites. You don't want to have wrong friends. But do you care about King Jesus? When you care about King Jesus, you don't let everybody into your house. You don't talk on the phone with people that's not a part of God's group. When you care about King Jesus, you don't let people have access to you that will destroy your fear of God. Do you care about King Jesus? There are People that go to conferences, they jump into different devotions. They hop all over churches. God can send a man of God to you. You still hop around churches. You still read books. You still do everything that everybody do. Do you care about King Jesus? Martha was still going to conferences. Mary realized, I don't need to go to a conference if Jesus is standing in front of me. I don't need to go to a conference if Jesus is talking to me. Why am I going and searching like everybody else when I have Jesus in front of me? But do you care about King Jesus? See, there's a difference in how people operate when they care about King Jesus. Number one, one of the greatest gifts of care, caring about King Jesus is recognizing his presence where it is manifesting for you. Where the presence of King Jesus is manifesting for you. That's one thing that God loves. When you recognize where his presence is, recognition, it 
creates a warm embrace. Recognition, it destroys the temptation to detour. It destroys the temptation to detour. Recognition. Recognition. It grabs the anointing of easiness. The grace for ease. Because when you recognize where God wants you to be and who God is operating through for you, then it makes things easy. Complication is the absence of revelation. That's not hard to understand. That's a wisdom door that you can write that down. Complication is the absence of revelation. Why does things get complicated? There's confusion because there's no infusion of what God is saying. Do you know the secret? Do you know the secret? It is the work of the Holy Spirit for your eyes to see with a single eye. The Bible talked about if your eye be single, your body will be full of light. If your eye be single, because it's a single focus, it's a single task. God is not sending you to rivers before he sends you to a raindrop. Always remember that. Always remember that. The raindrop simplifies the water that you're supposed to engage and encounter, the raindrop. And so once you manage a raindrop, he brings you into the rain. When you manage the rain, he brings you into the flood. When you manage the flood, he brings you into the tsunami. Do you care about King Jesus?